Hey everyone, uh, taking the time, uh, interesting, uh, turns out that uh, when I was in court, um, they are like, who is this guy and why is he in there? Um, um, the thing about the shirt was, I, it wasn't really planned that way. Um, I didn't imagine I would make it into court. Um, I was really there to, to shoot the footage um, uh, uh, during the uh, verdict to see how, you know, how things played out. Um, and uh, turns out, uh, DUI guy shared my uh, video on uh, on his YouTube. I got like 80,000, nearly 80,000 views on my video of the announcement. Uh, I was in, I was there so early, I probably had one of the best spots for camera. Um, and I uh, had a nice GX4, uh, G40 Canon, nice tripod. So they, they all kind of figured I knew what I was doing. So it didn't catch too much heat being an interloper <laughs> among the camera guys. But I, I was a gentleman. I brought water for everybody. Um, but um, uh, uh, the court, getting in court just was kind of a fluke. And that was the shirt I was wearing. Um, uh, didn't really expect to get in court, but... Uh, turned out nobody was there that day and it's like well okay fine so I got my band it was, it was like number 11 and it might have been number 11 out of 14 it wasn't it was funny but uh, and then you know early verdict uh, well early ish I, as soon as you possibly arguably is that verdict came about as soon as it possibly could have considering kind of like them having to wade through jury instructions and all so um, it seemed like it was a natural arc for, they had kind of had it figured out by the time the trial was over. Um, but, uh, uh, and so uh, everyone's sitting over by Team Depp and I'm like, well, let me go sit on this side. It, it should be interesting. And uh, I had sat on that side earlier uh, in, the, in the morning when I got my band just to s scope it out. And, um, uh, I wrote a little piece about it. an interesting vibe over on that side of the court. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just sat there and uh, went through the process. Uh, I, 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 earlier on when I got to the courthouse, you know, I introduced myself to the deputies, to the court stenographer, you know, because I, I am in this shirt. And they're probably thinking, who's this fruitcake? Um, uh, you know, it, I know I'm not Jeffrey Dahmer. I'm a nice guy. Um, just happened to be the shirt I was wearing. Um, it wasn't much going to sit around with a suit and tie doing camera work uh, around the around the whole event. So uh, I was kind of dressed for the uh, dressed for the weather. Um, anyway, uh, turned out uh, I'm going to um, uh, follow up with some more background information on me. People are wondering who I am. Um, there's a story. Uh, it's a nice story. I'm from Washington D.C. I wasn't born here, but uh, transferred. Um, my dad, when he retired from the military, came here, and I pretty much started middle school forward. I was always planning on leaving, but never did. Um, there's something about this area that's, um, there's a lot going on. There's a lot to do. My uncle was from here. I'm used to hanging around with a lot of the Washington types. He worked at Cong Department of Congress. Uh, my dad, we always hung out with a lot of military brass. There was some political types in the family. So uh, I'm used to Washington, uh, but I'm the guy that's in the entertainment business and have been ever since. Started off as a sound designer in an equity theater in my early 20s and uh, realized there's absolutely no money working in theater unless your father already has a gazillion dollars and everybody wants to hire you. So I just kind of, uh, was it, a bloom where I was planted, as you will. And uh, yeah, there's a nice story about that whole arc and... Uh, um, I've been the sound pig, uh, had a recording studio in, uh, um, in Manassas back in the 90s, and then met my wife and raised kids, and uh, kids got a little bit more uh, mature, and I went right back at music again with the support of my lovely lass, and uh, I'm probably one of the better sound engineers you're going to run into out here. I can say that. People will concur. Um, uh, it, it, it's um, something I do. Um, but uh, the social media side of things, um, it all began with me uh, just meeting all these interesting people and going, wow, these, these people aren't who you think they are uh, if you were to listen to narratives out there. So I started a, uh, um, a web page called the, uh, a blog basically called The Motley Patriot. And, uh, um, and then the website crashed and I'm like, ah, 
gosh, this, no more. Um, I'm just going to focus on content. And so I started uh, focusing on my YouTube channel, which is why it's kind of a recent ad. Uh, my Motley Patriot uh, was just writing uh, about what I saw when I met all these interesting people. And so this is a natural extension of that. And um, uh, I'll, uh, I'll follow up. There's some nice, there's some nice stories. We've done fundraisers in Washington. We did an event. Uh, well, um, I remember the hurricane in Houston. Everyone's talking hashtag Houston. And I'm like, uh, well, that's interesting. What about outside of Houston? Because uh, even though I work in D.C., uh, I'm rural to D.C., so, you know, 40 minutes away, some, somewhere along that, which is a good place to be um, uh, in Orange County. But uh, I did some research and uh, talked to some friends who were staffers and previous staffers. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, uh, shows with the band I produce um, uh, for a lot of Texans and asked around, and I'm like, hey, um, were there other areas that were damaged besides downtown Houston? And they're like, oh, yeah, absolutely. And so um, the majority of the hurricane damage was done outside of uh, Houston proper. Um, so I, uh, I went ahead and initiated a, uh, an event uh, in Washington. I found a room, um, uh, reached out to uh, contact in Victoria, Texas at the food bank. Robin Cadle, nice gal. She'll vouch for me. Well, mostly I think. Now she will. Um, but uh, we were able to sort of bring up a lot more awareness of um, the food bank and what they were doing out there. And um, she, she really appreciated it. She's always kind to me, always speaks highly. Um, another event I did, uh, uh, and it's just, you know, being a kind of a free range chicken, um, I'm more uh, tactical about these things. So I can kick up an event and, you know, a couple days to respond to something, calling in favors, you know, reaching out, finding a date that a room's open anyway, and um, and then uh, reach out to some folks on the hill, and the next thing you know, uh, put together a benefit for the uh, Capitol Hill police during that shooting, um, and a lot of folks came out, and the Speaker of the House showed up, and um, but where there was nothing, you know, one person can make a difference if you try, and uh, back to just being you know, trying to be a good citizen and, and you know, living an epic life. Um, but uh, let's see, the other event, what else did I do? Um, oh, yeah. So um, I'd done all these events, and so some people knew my name. And uh, I, uh, I got a call from a guy who worked for DIA, and he's like, hey, um, I was in a meeting, and they have to do this event there, and it's kind of one of those warm, fuzzy, feel-good events. Uh, kind of a talent show at DIA and um, uh, trying to put a warm fuzzy brand around uh, um, uh, a messy job uh, I remember reading a mandate about trying to sort of improve their curb appeal uh, for hiring um, and uh, I got a call next thing you know there's, I'm in the room with General Ashley at a big event got a photograph with him very sharp guy very very mission focused nice people um, very diverse workforce too, which is very interesting because uh, they're looking for brains, 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 and uh, uh, and getting things done. Um, but uh, yeah, I actually got a uh, challenge coin from General Ashley for that event. But from that, I got on uh, facility and I started um, the honor series because I noticed that someone had reached out again. Someone says, "Hey, um, you did such a great job with this. You think maybe you could help us with um, bringing some entertainment on base?" And this was up at uh, bowling. Air Force Base JBAP, um, and uh, I'm like, uh, yeah, sure. So uh, I started what was called the Honor Series, where um, I got a bunch of uh, people to volunteer to uh, perform. Um, some folks threw some money in to pay some performers, and uh, that started the Honor Series. And so uh, then after that, after that concert series, they're like, hey, can you did a great job DJing between the the bands that were performing, would you be interested in DJing a little bit at our club? And I'm like, oh, sure. So, and then next thing you know, I'm doing karaoke at the officer's club. And um, um, my DJ skills uh, apparently are not bad. Most DJs hate me because I'm not sitting there with my hat on sideways going beat match, beat match. I'm really just sort of entertaining the audience and uh, more of an MC, but also knowing what songs to play and uh, I always said, if you didn't piss everybody off equally, uh, you're not a very good DJ because you're definitely going to play music 
a little something for everyone. And I say that tongue in cheek. Um, you don't have to make people angry, but it doesn't hurt if you play something for everyone instead of trying to stick in a vein. And so, uh, but then COVID came and everything ramped down, so it, it sort of put a kibosh on that. But um, uh, moving forward, uh, uh, we'll talk later. Anyway, gotta run. Bye.